Hey guys, Gino Zero, how you doing? I hope all is well in YouTube land. We are going to, uh, 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 uh yeah, okay, I didn't forget. All right, we're having some friends over today. Uh, we're going to do like uh, an early Thanksgiving with some friends and uh, friends that we consider family. So uh, we're going to do a turkey. I've had a couple people ask me to show how I uh, cook my turkey, so I reckon I will. So first thing I did was last night is uh, I put some water in this cooler and I soaked this bird. This is a 20 pounder. I soaked it all night long in a salt water brine. I just use salt. A lot of people add other things, you know, to add a little bit of flavor, but I just use salt. And what that does is that uh, it helps clean it up a little bit. Any kind of uh, uh, dirt or any kind of impurities that are in the skin, it, uh, it cleans that up, it soaks it out, and it makes the skin really nice and clean and soft. And uh, when you roast it up, it makes a real good, juicy, crispy skin. And it helps hold in some of the moisture of the bird itself. So it's been soaking uh, for not quite 24 hours. You can let it soak for 24 if you want to. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pull this bird out and put it in the sink. And we're going to let it dry a little bit. And we're going to give it a rinse uh, with uh, some regular water. Just going to kind of rinse it off, get any of that extra salt and stuff that's on there. And we're going to let it dry. Uh, and if you're in a hurry, then by all means, you can just get some towels or paper towels and uh, go ahead and, and pat it dry. But we're going to let this dry for a little bit. And uh, once it's dry, we're ready to go to the next step. I will let you know, man, look at that nice, beautiful white skin. And it's soft and workable and clean. And it's going to be delicious. Ooh. So we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, guys, our bird is dried off enough where we can go to the next step. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that you remove the uh, the packet giblets, which is usually up here in the craw, in the skin right here. There'll be uh, the, where they put the liver and the heart and the gizzard, and then the neck will usually be inside the cavity here. Um, so you want to remove those out of the bird because you want those to make gravy with, which will be another video. <laughs> and now what we're going to do is I keep mine very, very simple. I don't, uh, a lot of people will stuff the bird, um, and that's okay if you want to stuff it. But me, and this is just my opinion, I'm not a turkeyologist or any of that kind of stuff, okay? This is just how I do mine. This is a big bird. It's a heavy bird. If you stuff it full, uh, it's going to add more mass to the bird. And it's going to take a long time to heat this up. More mass equals more time in the oven, which means there's more time for the bird to get dry, which is what I try to avoid. I like nice, juicy turkey. I don't like it dry. I'm not going to the Christmas vacation where you cut it and it's, you know, I don't like that. I like to keep it really, really simple on how I prepare the bird, and we make the dressing and everything else the, on, to, on the side, and the gravy on the side, and then we, uh, we, we do it that way. So, if you stuff your bird, just remember that's a lot more mass that, uh, that the heat has got to penetrate uh, in order to get everything cooked thoroughly and cooked through, and that's going to be more time that your turkey is going to be in the oven drying out. So, just my opinion, just me, just a dude, okay, cooking a turkey. So, here we go. What I'll do is I'll take, uh, I'm using margarine in this case, please feel free to use uh, butter or oleo, whatever it is that you crazy kids are into, feel free to use it. I'm going to rub the entire bird down and give it a good coating with, uh, with, like I said, I'm using margarine. And you notice I'm starting with the breast up. And if you want to, you can throw some, uh, some, you know, sometimes I'll throw some onions or uh, some celery or something like that into the cavity. Not anything that's going to add mass, uh, but it's what they call aromatics, which will, uh, as the vegetables cook and steam, it'll release a little bit of flavor. But uh, I'm just, I'm not going to for this, for this one now. I'm going to turn it over onto the breast side down. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I got my big roasting pan here. I've got about a half an inch or so of water in the bottom of the pan just to help catch some of the drippings. Again, we're gonna rub margarine all over the back of the bird and the sides and underneath the uh, the wings. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Now, and I have gloves on because it gets kind of messy. All right, so now I'm gonna just make sure, flip it over again. Give it a nice good coating. All right, take these off. Like I say, I keep it really, really simple as far as the bird goes. Now what I'm going to do is I got some seasoned salt here. 
I'm just going to sprinkle some seasoned salt over the top. That adds great flavor and a little bit of color as it, as it roasts. Sprinkle it. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic, garlic powder. Just sprinkle it on. And I'm going to use just a little bit of onion powder. Just going to sprinkle that on as well. Maybe a little bit of powder there in the in the in the water. Now I'm going to flip it onto its breast again, breast side down. Just like that. Keep you a towel handy because your hands are going to get messy. And you're not doing it right if you don't make a big mess anyway. So do the same thing on the back. Sprinkle the seasoned salt. Sprinkle a little bit of garlic. Garlic powder, not garlic salt. You don't want extra salty. A little bit of onion. Make sure that your bird is centered in your roasting pan because this is how it's going to go into the oven. I will cook mine breast side down uh, for 30 minutes first. The reason is, is uh, our oven, like most oven, um, the birds are going to cook by uh, the heat transfer method of radiation, which means that the heat is going to be coming down mostly from the top. Yeah, there's a bottom burner, a uh, bottom heating element in our oven, but a lot of that heat is going to be blocked by the pan and it won't penetrate as well as the heat from the top. So the top is where the most of the heat is going to come from. Uh, we start the cooking process with the back up. That way uh, it starts warming and starts cooking all the way through. And then uh, we're going to cook it for 30 minutes at 350 degrees just like this. And then I'll show you what I do uh, after 30 minutes. So let's get this in the oven at 350 and I'll see you in 30 minutes. Okay guys, we have been at 30 minutes in the oven. We're going to now take, pull the turkey out, close the oven door so it'll lose all your heat. I'm going to set it right up here. I'm going to grab a pair of tongs and my long fork here and I'm going to flip the turkey onto one side. Just like that. We're going to leave it with this side up. If it, it's going to move around on you a little bit, but that's okay. You just want to be careful because it's really hot. So now we're going to let it cook with this side up for 15 minutes at 350. Um, and like I say, what that's going to do is it's going to distribute all the heat evenly throughout the bird and let it cook evenly, and it's going to cook quicker uh, when you're doing it this way. So we're going to cook it now. We're going to put it back into the oven at 350 with this side up for 15 minutes. Said, need to be real careful. And we'll see you in 15 minutes. Alrighty, we were at 15 minutes. We're going to pull the bird out very carefully. Set it back up here. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to use our tongs and our fork and we're going to flip it. Actually, I'm going to use it this way. We're going to flip the bird now all the way over onto the other side. To where we have the other wing and the other leg and thigh in the up position. And we're going to stabilize it a little bit. And we're going to put it back into the oven now for, you guessed it, 15 minutes. And so once we cook it with this side up for 15 minutes and we're getting ready to do the final flip and the final cook, I will get back with you. So we got, remember we were so far, we we're backside up for 30 minutes, uh, one wing and leg up for 15 minutes. Now we flipped it, the other one up for 15 minutes and uh, we'll be back with you here in just a little bit. Okay guys, so we're at 15 minutes now with this side up. So we're going to now flip the bird to where we have the breast side up, just like this. Remember now we are an hour into the cooking process. Now we have 30 minutes on the back, 15 minutes on each side. Now we're gonna finish it with the breast up and it should take maybe, I don't know, an hour and a half to two hours for this bird to be completely cooked now. 
Uh, we, to me, doing it this way, it makes the heat distribute more evenly and it starts the cooking process on the backs and the sides and it cooks the bird quicker. Uh, we could have just threw it in there breast up and let it cook for four hours, but then it's going to be dry and I don't like dry turkey, so this is just how I do it. Uh, now we're going to put this bird back into the oven at 350 and we're going to let it bake. Uh, we'll check on it in an hour and a half and see and uh, we'll go from there. So we're going to put it back into the oven and we'll see you guys in an hour and a half. Okay guys, here we are now. We've been an hour and a half, about an hour, 35 minutes actually. And our turkey is done. And it looks pretty darn tasty and nice and brown and crispy crust or crispy skin. And uh, of course our little pop-up thing, which I don't like these, but uh, it's, it's, it's done. Uh, the, the turkey is done. So now we're gonna cover it with uh, aluminum foil. loosely so that it can steam and we're just going to let it rest just going to let it sit and rest for i don't know 10 15 minutes ish we're going to finish up some other stuff and uh then we'll carve it up here directly but right now we are at uh what two and a half hours for a 20 pound turkey and it's done so that's just all the way we distribute the heat and uh it helps it move right along so we'll see in a few minutes when we get ready to cut this bad boy up Okay guys, here we go. We got our bird up here. We're going to start uh, taking it apart. What I do first is I remove the leg. Just find your joint. Really easy to do. You definitely want to save all these bones for soups and stews and all kinds of goodies that you can make. Now we're going to remove this piece of the wing. Like I say, it's just all this part right here is just a matter of finding your joints and making your cut. Pretty warm. Helps to have a sharp knife as well. There's our thigh. Now, when I go to do the breast, I'm going to do the side of the breast like this. I'll make my first cut right down here at the bottom of the breast, and I'll go in just like this. I'll get a better position on here. Turn around here so you can see. Make my first cut horizontal, and I'll go all the way in to the bone as far as I can get in. That way, when you start making your breast slices, you just cut down to where your cut was and you can lay them right open. You see how juicy, see how juicy that meat is? Two and a half hours, a 20 pound turkey, and it is completely done and delicious. So there you go. Now you can just fillet them right on out. Cut your breast slices. And you are ready to put them on a plate and serve them. Get my tongs here. But yep, it is very, very moist, very, very juicy still. The turkey's not dry, and uh, that's just how I cook my turkey. Because I don't like dry turkey, I like it nice and moist, and this is a method that I learned several years back on uh, whenever you're cooking your bird, rotating it out like that. And you end up with a wonderful, beautiful, delicious bird. So, there you have it. I hope that helps, that's how I do my turkey. Uh, Y'all, thanks for watching. Uh, enjoy, if I can do it, you can do it. God bless, in the end. Okay guys, not the end. I guess we'll show you uh, the spread that we threw down for this Thanksgiving. Um, and what we got here, we got, of course we got the turkey, and we've got uh, Moving On 04's uh, world famous cornbread dressing. We got some ham. This is the uh, giblet gravy. We got our homemade uh, dinner rolls. That is a pea salad that Cheryl on the Hill made. We got loaded mashed potatoes. That's just mashed potatoes that has been baked with uh, a little bit of extra cream some cheese and uh, bacon on top and I always put a little bit of sour cream on top of mine. Sweet corn. This is, uh, these aren't sweet potatoes. These are just like the Kushaw squashes and some butternut squash that we can't eat and made like this, uh, which is awesome by the way. And then we got our dessert table over here. We got of course a couple of pumpkin pies. It's got a layer of cheesecake underneath it. We've got pumpkin rolls that our neighbor Haley made, which uh, I'm pretty sure they're poisonous, but we'll eat them anyway. I'm just saying. Uh, we've got a peach cobbler. We've got some Kool-Aid pies that uh, 
Sunshine, uh, moving on 04's daughter, made and brought. And we've got, of course, a pineapple upside down cake. And now, oh, and there's a green bean casserole apparently floating around somewhere that I didn't have time to put on the table because we don't got no room. So it's time to eat. I uh, wish everybody a very happy Thanksgiving. God bless. Uh, once I finish up this video, we're going to eat, and I'll be in a food coma for probably two days at least. So we'll see if there's any more videos to come shortly. So you guys, thanks for watching. In the end, again. Buzz, buzz, the end.